Hey church, welcome to Wisdom Thursday. Today we are having a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and reading verses 7 to 10. Uh, please press pause and do so if you haven't done that yet. Right, so as we've explored uh, in all of our wisdom literature, wisdom literature offers embodied or applied wisdom. Uh, that is, it requires more than just cognitive agreement. It calls for a change of heart and a change of actions. You know, the head, heart, and hands. It all works together. And we see both, uh, all three, right, in this passage today. We see uh, some knowledge that we need to take on board. But then we see a call for a change of heart and a change of action. Uh, and so, this passage shows us how to live in a random world controlled by God. It shows us how to live in a random world controlled by God. So, uh, both in our hearts and in our hands. So, there's an emotional reaction and a practical reaction, a practical response. And the practical and emotional response call for here is one of balance. Emotional balance and practical or behavioural balance. Let me explain. Firstly, emotional balance. In verse 8, read it with me. However many years one may live, let them enjoy them all. But let them remember the days of darkness, for there will be many. Everything to come is meaningless. Right. Enjoy life, but remember the days of darkness. This is a call for emotional balance. The realistic view of life put forward in the book of Ecclesiastes calls for neither uh, pessimism or some sort of blind optimism about the days under the sun. It calls for a healthy, balanced view. And this is wise. Why? Well... If we expect a cushy life as a Christian, then we may blame God when things go wrong. He hasn't given us what we wanted to get. Life actually didn't go as perfectly as I thought. I was having good times, but then there was days of darkness. And so it's wise to remember this. This is a healthy and, and, and wise way to live. Not negative, not overly silly, stupidly positive, but, but realistically in a broken world to enjoy the good stuff but recognise that there will be days of darkness. It's wise. It sets us up ready for what we will uh, inevitably experience as days of darkness. When we adopt this healthy uh, approach to life, this balanced perspective, we are free to enjoy the good and continue to trust God through the bad that we experience. And the passage not only calls for this emotional balance, but it also calls for uh, behavioural balance. Have a look at verse 9. You who are young, be happy while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. There's a behavioural balance here. Enjoy your life. Follow your heart. Use your freedom. Seize the day. This is all good stuff, right? You've been created to enjoy this world. Enjoy it. Get into it. But the counterbalance is that this world is overseen by a God of justice. So we are to weigh our behavior in light of a God who calls us to love him and others. We balance our desires with God's desires, a behavioral balance. And of course, this is what wisdom is all about, right? Knowing God, loving him, and being conformed into his likeness so that our desires come more in line with his desires. And that balance just becomes more natural for us as we get to know and love him more and apply this wisdom to our lives. Emotional balance, behavioural balance. And this balance is healthy. And this balance is essential in a random and fallen world. But what I love about the story of the Bible is that this need for balance is not permanent. It's not forever. A day is coming when we no longer have to balance our enjoyment with this healthy preparedness for darkness. A day is coming where we will no longer need to balance living out our desires with trying to live out God's desires. I'm going to read for you Revelation 22 verses 1 to 5. It's a picture of the new earth, the eternal destiny of all Christians. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as, clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river there stood a tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, 
and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more light. They will not need the light of a sun or of, uh, of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. See, we don't have to balance our enjoyment with expectation of darkness. Why? Verse 5, well, there's no need for light. There's no more darkness because God is with us and will be our light. That's incredible. And we will no longer need to balance our desires with God's desires anymore. Verse 3, because no longer will there be any curse. Sin will be erased and will be conformed entirely into his likeness. The need for balance is gone when all things are restored to perfect balance, where our hearts are truly aligned with God's and all creation is truly aligned with God's purposes. And all of this is possible because of the work of Jesus. Let's apply verse 9 to him, right? You know, he says, enjoy your life, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Well, God did bring Jesus into judgment for all these things. But not all the things he's done, but all the things we've done. Not for Jesus' failure to show or follow God's desires, but for our failure to follow God's desires. And God rose him from the dead so that the days of darkness may be no more. Let's thank him in prayer now. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you lived the perfect life we couldn't live. Uh, and you rose again to guarantee us this perfect balance of, in the future that we could not attain by ourselves. May our hearts be aligned more and more with yours as we seek to live this out with our heads, our hearts and our hands. And we pray that you will hasten the day where we can enjoy this perfect balance in all its fullness. We pray this in your name. Amen.